Time must be getting on. I make it about five past three. Ten past is zero hour. One hell of a shindig when this goes off. Oh, a beautiful morning as well. The birds will be waking up in English wood. Hmm. Yeah, there goes a lark. Way up into the sky he goes. He doesn't give a tuppenny dump for all these guns. His song might be drowned out, but not his joy. God's in his heaven, eh? And all's right on the earth. I don't know about that. That's what the lads ask me. Padre, if God's in his heaven, why is it hell on earth, eh? A good question. How soft the silver dawn light looks. And the mist hanging low over the meadow like some sort of silver sea dimly lit. And the clumps of trees like islands in the mist. How still. How soon this silence will be broken. <laughs> War is like a mighty earthquake, swallowing up everything before it. And then guns, these guns are like a, like a man with a, with a loud voice and no brains, shouting in an argument. <laughs> and here I am laughing. <laughs> oh, we laugh quite a bit here, actually. It keeps one another spurred on. That's the stuff to give them, that's what we cry out. That's the stuff to give them. <laughs> and it's quite a glorious sight as well. A mighty silver spread of light flames against the black silhouette of the trees. But it's a damnable sight. It's a disgrace to civilization. It's murder. That's what it is. It's wholesale murder. I mean, we sit here behind our guns, but we can't see what's happening over there. They're just lads. They've got mothers and wives and kiddies and loved ones back home, just like we have, just like my little Patrick. <laughs> you what, lad? Yeah, 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 shout a bit louder. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the stuff to give them, eh? That's the stuff to give them. It won't last much longer, lad, don't worry. They'll have to quit soon. How many times have they heard that? I believed in this war. I did, really. I stood in my pulpit many times and I said, every able-bodied young man should volunteer for active service. There should be no shirking from that responsibility whatsoever. And if you're not on active service, you should be praying. And so I came out here spurring them on to victory, convinced we were doing God's duty. We shall overcome. Our English spirit will prevail. I made it sound so glorious. War, it's only glorious when you buy it in the Daily Mail and enjoy it at the breakfast table. It goes well with bacon and eggs normally. A real war. Real war's the bitter end of our brutality. It's the silliest, filthiest, most inhumane thing that has ever happened. I spent some time with a wounded soldier. He asked me, what's God like, Padre? Oh, he was writhing about in pain. He was close to death, to be honest. What's God like? This God who gets us to fight, this kernel of the world, what's he like? I, I thought for a minute or two and then I pointed to a crucifix above one of the officer's beds. I said, he's like that. He's like that. The soldier was quiet for a minute or two and then he looked at me, his face full of doubt and disappointment. God's not like that, Padre, he said. God's almighty. Not nailed to a cross, broken in all but spirit. He's almighty. You get us to sing songs about God's victory. But 
you've not been out on the front line, Padre. This world is still full of sin, he said. Sin like this filthy wall. He's out of it. God's out of it. That's what one of the lads said to me in the trenches. Christ suffered once and for all and then ascended into heaven and left us here in hell. I mean, they're, they're tired, cold, frightened boys. That's all they are. What's God like for them? And then one day it struck me. I was running back towards our lines, mad with fright, to be honest, and I, I went across this bit of open land, it used to be a wooded copse or something, and I tripped. I must have stumbled over something or other, and I looked down to see what I'd tripped over, and there, on the ground, looking up at me, was this young, underfed, undersized, underage German boy, wounded in his head and his stomach. And I looked down at this pathetic creature and I thought what's this got to do? what the devil has he got to do with you hmm? you're not some blonde blue-eyed Prussian you're a boy that's all and as I looked down at the face on this boy it was as if Jesus on the cross took his place <laughs> there was Jesus looking up at me and I could hear these words whatever you do for the least of these little ones you do for me and from that moment on, I, I never saw the battlefields as anything other than Jesus on the cross. That's what I saw. I saw him in the slums. I saw him in the overcrowded quarter. I saw him in some vulgar street speaking to me of luxury and waste. I saw him in the headlines of a newspaper, speaking out about the lost, bewildered and tortured world. But the vision of life in the cross is not one of despair. It's not. It's one of hope. It's one of confidence. Why? I'll tell you why. Because behind the cross is an empty tomb. And Jesus, with his wounded hands, ready to bless you. Ready to ascend into heaven.